thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatchin' t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. Report number 10733, Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Tuesday, February 22nd, 2005. Observed. Me and my family have moved to the Montgomery County area in October of 2001. In December, I had noticed an old logging road leading into the Sam Houston National Forest from the subdivision which was still under development at the time. I haven't hiked since I was a teenager, so I decided to see where this road went when weather permitted. In April of 2002, I had taken some vacation time from work, and one afternoon after mowing, I thought I would go for a walk, a routine I continued for several days going further down the, deep, the road and deeper into the woods with each trek. I had seen evidence of deer, hog, squirrel, and even bear in the area. On the sixth day, I walked by an area that had springs on both sides of the trail, which alternated sides every so often. I noticed on this trip there was no animal sounds or activity, and I felt watched. So I stopped, and I surveyed my surroundings, and to the east of me, about twenty-five yards in the thick underbrush, something quite robust in size and dark in color seemed to be crouched between a couple of trees looking in my direction. I thought it was a large hog or maybe a bear, so I turned south, heading toward home, and this creature moved along with me, keeping a distance of approximately 15 to 30 yards between us at all times. We continued this kind of cat and mouse routine for about 20 to 25 minutes. I stopped to relieve myself. Then suddenly, I don't know what possessed me to turn into the woods toward this creature. It stopped and crouched very low to the ground and remained perfectly still. I had gotten into about ten yards, and I got wind of a strange odor, and I can't, I can't describe it. I heard a low, guttural growl coming from the creature's area. I could see it was dark in color and almost lying in a prone position, much like a sniper, lining up a shot, it and human-like legs, only very hairy. I could make out thick arms and shoulders, also covered with thick hair, probably no more one to two inches in length. It was down almost as if it was trying to hide its face. I would estimate it to be no more than six feet tall. The hair on my neck stood up when I heard movement of something large moving in, wo in the woods from across the trail behind me. I moved quickly back onto the trail, and it seemed I wasn't being followed, so I slowed my pace, and by this time I was about a hundred to a hundred and twenty-five yards from the point I had urinated. I turned and saw this dark figure walk upright out of the east woods and stop at my puddle area. It squatted for a few seconds, then it stood up and looked directly at me for a few more seconds. It head turned abruptly toward the west woods, and much lar larger dark being came slightly into view. They both watched me as I backpedaled watching them for another dozen or so yards when I decided home was the best place to be and ran off. Also noticed, over the next three years of living in that area, I would often feel being watched when I was outdoors. Loud crash, crashing sounds from the woods, times of no animal activity at all, and my, da d my dogs would growl fearfully towards the woods. Occasional chattering and screams, foul odors, sticks and debris coming from the woods, and even I shine one evening about eight feet from the ground. Neighbor at the time said she heard grunts and groans some nights, and her dog would shake. Other witnesses, none. Other stories, none. Time and conditions, 2 to 4 p.m., clear and sunny. Follow-up investigation report. The witness told me that his first impression upon having the encounter was 
bear, or hog. He was originally from the eastern United States and had seen bears before. However, after just a little time had transpired, he realized he was not encountering a bear or a hog, but something much more unique. The witness had the impression, after hearing a very large animal moving through the woods, that he had perhaps seen a younger animal, and then a much more mature and larger animal appeared. Although the witness, a combat veteran, felt some fear, he did not feel threatened when he first encountered the smaller animal. It was not until he heard the crashing through the woods of a large animal, presumably the larger animal he later saw emerge from the woods, that he began to be genuinely frightened. The witness had wondered before his encounter whether or not Sasquatch-like animals actually existed. Well, after his encounter with these two strange animals, he became convinced that Sasquatch like creatures are indeed no myth. Have a great day from SCSO. Hey guys. We are at the Kirby Trail. We are in the National Preserve um, down here in Texas near the Sam Houston National Park. Um, known Squatch area here. It's kind of interesting. There's a lot of gunfire in the uh, distance. Uh, this tree line is amazingly thick. Just getting in here. I'm already seeing signs of things. I've only been here a few minutes. This was uh, pretty far down, pretty east, pretty south. If you look at a map, um, Definitely one of our furthest um, expeditions, you could say. Uh, haven't done one in a while. So uh, we'll keep it rolling here for a few minutes. I'm going to go down this Kirby Trail a little bit and see. There's not many cars in the parking lot. Uh, about 5 o'clock at night. Kind of nice getting out and walking a little, actually. Definitely quiet out here. Hope everybody's doing well. Gunfire is definitely interesting so close to the preserve, but it uh, makes sense. I guess if you're a hunter. This is kind of the, I guess, the eastern edge of it all. I'll try and include a map with the video. A little house out here, probably a ranger house. Was well, visitor center on the way in that was already closed, so I'm gonna stop rolling for a second. I'll pick it back yeah, up in a minute. Definitely squatchy in here. Um, this canopy instantly turns it into. Um, like 30 percent dark, darker i don't know if you're picking this up on here it uh yeah, it's pretty darn thick this is probably similar to some of the areas of the uh, pack northwest for sure um yeah you've got a lot of pine in here you got a lot of oak uh some of these rubber tree plants you know, magnolias, I think they're called too. But it's definitely uh, instantly got pretty thick in here. I'm going to try and hang out here till, uh you know, pretty close to nighttime if I can. Unfortunately, I didn't bring the night vision, but I got a new uh, spotlight that I'm hoping to try out. That's about, it's around six, I want to say over 600 lumens. I could be wrong on that. And I'll correct it on the video if I am, but uh, yeah, it's good to be back doing this again, guys. Um, hopefully bring John along next time and the rest of the crew. It's a little far for for, for them for this one, but uh, again, I'm going to try and at least hang on till nighttime. See if we can pick something up. 
National Preserve. Um, you can see where, right where that red area is there, it says you are here. So it's a pretty good size area. Uh, again, uh, quite a few uh, squatch sightings down in this area. side of the reserve. This is a known sighting location around 2014, I believe. Um, keep this rolling for a minute. I know it's not the best video. It's not a secure or stable uh, view to the best I can here. Um, but this is the road I think it was a little later in the year. But this is the road where a couple had a sighting. And it was about this time at night. And this, the preserves is out here on the right somewhere, I believe. And we should be getting up on the farm roads here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, pretty interesting story. They were just kind of buzzing along the road sound like they had just came out of one of the preserves checking it out maybe um, I did see some deer on the way in too and they came around a corner and they saw about a five foot but very wide uh, squatch basically crossing the road um, you know that wasn't a lot of detail provided I think they just kind of passed it, saw it, realized what it was later, that type of thing, reported it. Um, but yeah, looks like we're going to get into part of the reserve here, and maybe we'll get a chance at something. Kind of going to burn some daylight here, but hoping to get back in another part of this reserve here. It's not exactly very well mapped out, but uh, I'll come back online in a minute. All right, guys, I'm still going here. Um, still about an hour towards daylight. Get out of the tree line, I realized that. Um, we got, I'm hoping that FM, I think it's 1276, where the siding location is. And I believe this road will take us there. It's just not super clear. Um, on the National Park Reserve map. Um, my mapping program. I'm going to probably launch it here in a minute. I just wanted to get a little more video for you guys and really kind of show the beauty of this country. But, uh, you know, show you the reserves over here on the right. It's kind of interesting. It's mixed in with houses, too, which I don't know how that all that works out here. But, um, okay, so we're just passing the street, and that's Jones Street. So I'm still going. Um, I'm going to get my bearings again here in a minute and see if I actually am going in the right direction. It would be nice to get another National Preserve sign. There, there was pretty well marked back at the, the last area. The Kirby Trail was marked, but I haven't got any other indications of... Uh, the National Preserve on this side. I'm just kind of going by their maps and um, what I read about the siding location. Again, now we're getting back into some more residential here. Um, about an hour towards daylight, which, whatever reason, I think a lot of sightings happen around right at right when uh, you know it gets dark, basically. Um, Okay, I'll be back. I'm going to get my bearings here and making sure that I am, in fact, going the right way. Be what total waste here. Be right back. Did confirm it. This is the right road. I'm going to let this roll for another minute. And I'm going to try and find a spot just to wait about another half an hour. I really want to use that new guys we're back in one of the other areas of the big thicket preserve out here um, it's almost dark 
and I thought I missed it, but that was heading back on the main road and I saw another sign, so here it is. It's the Lance Rossier unit. Um, they, again, they don't, they don't give me a lot of information out here. Um, there actually was a sign telling me that the visitor center was supposedly the other way. Um, but here we are, and I'm going to try out that new um, spotlight here in a minute. And see if I can get any anything with it. Um, I'm gonna check the map real quick. I'll be right back, guys. So the Lance Rossier units way down here. Uh, <laughs> the rest of the reserves kind of over this way. So um, I guess we're a little further west of the main part of the preserve, if this map is correct. Anyhow. Guys, let's go down here. I see an interesting tree bend. Um, and then once we get down here a little bit, I want to try and use the new spotlight and see how it works out. Because um, it's getting dark enough now, I think, you know, it'll show up a little bit anyways. Yeah, definitely a tree bend. So... That's definitely not weather related. That Sasquatch telling us to stay out, essentially. Interesting. That's one of the best ones I've ever seen, guys. Um, almost going over the road. Um, yeah. I don't think that's from nature. That's definitely a Squatch thing. So, anywho. I'm going to turn around and go back out and I'll run some more video on the way out, run a little bit of the uh, new uh, flash floodlight and let's we'll see if we can get anything on the way out guys. Alright guys, heading out now, I don't know if you can see some of this. I'm lazing down in the trees looking for some eye shine or anything I'm back up on some main road I've lost track of where the preserve is and that's about it well better luck next time guys it's been fun again back glad back to be at it you know um, <clears throat> anytime out here is better than the best day working for real so i don't think i said that right but anyhow everybody have a great weekend and i hope you enjoyed this and uh talk to you next time report number two two three seven Submitted by witness on Tuesday, April 17, 2001. Early morning encounter on North Texas Back Road. Year, 2001. Season, Spring. Month, March. State, Texas. County, Wise County. Location details, please contact me for directions. Nearest town, Chico. Nearest road, Farm Market Road, 1810. Observed. In March 2001, at 4.30 a.m. on my way home from work, on the back roads, something crossed in front of my headlights. This thing had long hair, long arms, and it was between six and seven feet tall, and it was traveling fast. It crossed the road in front of me in two to three steps. It stepped over a fence and went into a coastal field out of my vision. It was grayish color, but everything in that area is covered in rock crusher dust, so it could have been any color. This thing was not as hefty as the pictures on your side, but he was tall with long arms. 
He stood on two feet like a human with long arms and didn't run but was lumbering across the road. I told others at my work about this and two other men saw the same thing on April 12, 2001, about a mile from where I saw it. My boss saw it when he was a young man and stated it screamed like he had never heard before and couldn't mimic the sound it made. We live in Texas and are hesitant to speak about this, but what I saw that morning was something I have never seen before. Other witnesses, just me on this side and coming from work. Other stories. As stated above in my story, three other people have seen this thing time and conditions. My headlights shined on it as it crossed the road. It was a cool night because I had my windows rolled up in my pickup. Environment. Rock quarries, hills, but at, that, at the time it was out in the open crossing a dirt road. There is a creek that runs through that country. The crusher has many pits that are full of water and there are hills around the area. Follow-up investigation report. I spoke with the witness by telephone about his close encounter. Even though it had been two years since the incident occurred and I contacted him in a cold call fashion, the witness presented himself in a very credible manner. As he had stated in his initial submission, the witness was getting off work and coming home. It was approximately 0430 hours when he noticed something up ahead standing on the side of the road. The witness's first impression in an instant was that of a cow as his mind attempted to rationalize what he was seeing. However, the witness then noticed that the thing was standing up like a human. At that moment, it occurred to the witness that he was seeing something highly unusual, and as he approached to within 50 feet, the creature took two to three strides in a fast walk and was completely across the road. The witness stated that he believed at that moment that he was seeing a Bigfoot. He said that it didn't make sense to him, but there it was, very plain, and there was no mistaking it for anything else. It was tall, approximately six to seven feet in height. The Bigfoot had an eye shine as it looked at him while crossing the road, but the witness could not remember a distinct color. The witness stated that he had always heard that the hair of these creatures was brown, but the one he saw was definitely gray. The witness attributed the gray coloration to dust from rock crushing. Apparently, there is a large facility nearby that crushes the limestone rock found in the area. The rock crushing has the rather undesirable effect of giving dark colored objects a gray or off-white hue. The witness went on, on to say that the hair of the creature was long, but it wasn't shaggy. The witness said that the sighting happened so quickly that he was unable to discern any other details relating to face, hands, feet, etc. The witness stated that the animal cleared the road and stepped over the fence. That was the last the witness saw of the animal. The witness said, I started to turn around, but I just went on home. I asked him if the sighting alarmed him. The witness stated that it surprised him more than anything and that he was not frightened at all. Summation. Two years had lapsed since the witness reported this sighting, but he was still able to talk to me in a very confident and compelling way. He was not hesitant at all in telling me of the encounter, even though he had endured some skepticism from his friends and co-workers. I asked him if he had entertained the idea of a man in a monkey suit, and the witness unequivocally stated that it was a real animal, and without question, what he saw that morning was a Bigfoot. Report number 56826. Submitted by witness on Saturday, February 18, 2017. 
close daytime sighting on a ranch in the Canadian River Valley. Year 2014. Season, summer. Month, July. Date, 14th. State, Texas. County, Roberts County. Location details. Directions will be given to investigator. Nearest town, Canadian, Texas. Nearest road, South River Road. Observed. I had just loaded some oil drilling equipment to haul back to the oil company yard for them. I had been driving down the lease road going through a very large ranch on the Canadian River Valley in the Texas Panhandle. It was about 7.30 p.m. I was driving very slow, approximately 10 to 15 miles per hour, because the ranch has speed limits on their lease roads, and the roads are very rough. This location is on private property, and out of respect for the landowner, I will not disclose the location. It is a very desolate area about 23 miles to the nearest town. There are very few homes in the area with about 5 to 10 miles between homes. It was unusual weather for mid-July. It was warm but overcast with clouds and a breeze coming out of the north. It was still very bright for it was over an hour before sunset. I was driving along, noticing how heavy the plum bushes were loaded. We haven't had a good crop of sand plums in several years on account of the severe drought that we had been suffering from. I noticed out of my peripheral vision that what looked to be a very tall and very thick butt of a bull. I kept thinking this was very unusual to see a river ranch bull that that is so large and thick. I have only seen this type of bull on the show circuit. I have showed cattle in 4-H and FFA and my kids showed cattle also. I grew up on a dairy farm and we also raised beef cattle. I have raised cattle for over 40 years and been around many different breeds of cattle, yet this one was exceptionally large. And as I got closer to this bull, I started getting a clearer look at it. Bulls this thick typically don't have much of a tail head. They are pretty flat topped. But this one did. As I got closer, I realized he didn't have a tail at all. The hair was wrong and too long for a bull. It was brown with a reddish tint on the ends as if it were sun bleached. This bull was four to six inches long, bleached out strawberry blonde, matted hair hanging just above midpoint on him. I then noticed that I couldn't see under this bull and that is very wide at the ground level. This made no sense. By this time, there was no brush between me and him to block my view of this thing. He was standing in the open on bare ground. There was a large shade tree. The cattle used a good bit because there was no grass around the tree. Then it hit me. This is a Bigfoot. I cannot believe it. Not 70 feet from me. My pickup and trailer are a total of 65 feet long, so it was pretty easy to figure the distance to him. I realized I caught the big fella out in the wide open. I knew I was coming up on a curve in the road, and I could drive off into a deep ditch, so I looked up to stay on the road, hitting my brakes to stop. I didn't take my eyes off of him for more than two seconds, but that was all he needed. He was gone. There is a small canyon about 30 feet to the south of where he was. I believe he went that direction. I jumped out of my truck and ran down to the end of my trailer to try to see this massive creature again. Then I realized 
With its size and speed, that was probably not a good idea. As I walked back to my truck, watching my back, I knew where he had been standing and that there was probably footprints and knuckle prints there that I could take pictures of. I had my camera with me, and I'd have proof to show my family of what I saw. But I also knew he could be on top of me in two seconds if I went over there. I had my phone and my camera with me, but it never entered my mind to grab them while the creature was standing there in front of me. I have always heard of these being described as massive creatures. Truly, that is the only way to describe it. The shoulders and arms were massive. I didn't get a good look at its face because I was too busy wondering why I couldn't see under it. So I focused more on the lower half. But I did notice the contrasting colors of its face. It was lighter around the eyes and darker over the nose, and I think I caught him with sand plums in his mouth because of the red tint in the lip area. He looked to be at least five foot six tall down on his knuckles and could be easily taller than that. He was very wide. I am six foot three and 235 pounds, and he was at least one and a half to two of me in width. Down on my knuckles, I am on th only about three feet tall. I know their arms are longer than humans, but this still makes him a very tall boy. I had to estimate the weight of cattle most of my life and was always been within about 10 to 25 pounds of guessing them correctly. And I would estimate him weighing in the neighborhood of 850 pounds. With that said, he could easily weigh more because of the sheer muscle mass that I could see. Other stories, yes, one listed on the BFRO website. Time and conditions, 7.30 p.m., daylight, cloudy, overcast, warm with a light northerly breeze. Environment, rough country with bluffs, deep washings and ravines, mesquite trees, native elm trees, and lots of big sand plum thickets. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Sibelia Irwin. I met with this witness in mid-January of 2017 and worked with him one-on-one -on -one to create a witness sketch of the individual that he saw that July day. The witness has raised cattle and exotics, is a lifelong hunter, is highly educated in the medical profession, and I found him to be 100% credible. Additional details that can be added. Hair was dark brown with bleached out tips that turned strawberry blonde towards the ends. From chest level down, the hair became matted in lengths of four to six inches long. He described them like bundles of hair that tapered at the top and at the ends, increasing in numbers on the lower portion of the body. Shoulders were approximately 3.5 feet wide. No neck was seen, nor were hands and feet seen. The arms, massive biceps and forearms, and looked very long. Height. Individual was approximately 5.5 feet tall on all fours. Weight. 850 pounds to 1,000 pounds due to muscle mass. Head. Conical shaped. The witness was astounded by the speed demonstrated by this creature. He isn't ex sure exactly what direction it went. It was there one second and gone when he looked back. He also did not hear any sounds from the creature after he got out of his truck to look around for it. The Canadian River Valley is 906 miles long. It consists of flat terrain, bluffs, ravines, pockets of thick trees in some areas, and numerous plum thickets. Water sources include the Canadian River, numerous streams, stock tanks, even freshwater frack ponds throughout the area. Food sources, deer, turkey, hogs, 
antelope, rabbits, various types of small animals, and wild sand plums. Bluffs in this area can range 100 feet or more and could possibly be used for protection and safe travel corridors. Witness sketch.